And on that note, well, welcome folks to our Nestle Fitness Malaysia Women Marathon and uh, how to prepare for your run webinar. Uh, I'm Andrew O'Brien and I'm uh, here presenting with uh, Sue O'Brien and we have our wonderful host and race director with us, Karen Lowe. How are you, Karen? Hello there. Hi. How, how's everybody doing? It's great and thank you very much for all the work you've done in, in putting together this, this wonderful event coming up in, in a couple of weeks time and before I sort of hand over to you to um, sort of take us through some of the, the background, just for the logistics of people coming in uh, and and for the, uh, the recording aspect, where am I going, I'm going back here, if you have any questions uh, put them into the chat box there or or even better, into the Facebook page for Malaysia Women Marathon, and that's where the conversation is going. And both Sue and Karen are keeping an eye on there, and also with any questions that go into Facebook that we don't get answered directly during the webinar. Then after the webinar is finished, I'm sure that Karen will uh, look through answer it. Answer those, and any that it might apply to the things that Sue and I talk about, we'll deal with that. So as any well. questions related specific to the topic, we will stop to answer questions, we'll, or we'll wait to the end. We're going to go through the presentation, and then yeah. we're going to go through the questions that are there as we answer them as well. Uh, and of course, people can put them into the chat box. So, okay, we have everybody muted so that we don't get too much noise and background and everyone can listen. As I said, we are recording so that um, you can watch it back later and those people that uh, not everybody who's who's participating is here tonight are going to be here tonight so they can watch that at their leisure later on. So 7th of April, it's all on. It is part of history and uh, Karen and her team have done a magnificent job to organise things. We. Um, I just love this, this old sticker, I can't. <laughs> I, I know, I run I can. like a girl. Try to keep up. And so, Don't, uh, don't we just, all run like a girl and run well like a girl? Well, I think the uh, Malaysia Women's Marathon is going to be 80-something marathon side by side for Sue and I, and I've been chasing her for all Fantastic. these years, so I'll keep on, keep on chasing her. So one of these days I'll catch her, I think. Maybe <laughs> not. So again, just a reminder about the Facebook page and a little bit about our agenda. We're doing the introductions. Um, we're going to then ask Karen to really give us the background and the details, the specifics, take us through the course and some of the wonderful events that are on. Sue's going to take us through um, some preparation material for the next couple of weeks, some tips and ideas, and then we've got some questions. And then we've got uh, a couple of other webinars coming up as well, which we'll uh, just close off to let people know about. We, um, we're hoping in, or we're planning in total that we will be no more than an hour. But if we do have people, if people have questions, we're happy to hang around a bit longer and, and deal with the questions. But certainly the presentation is going to be well and truly done and a fair bit of question time within that hour. So just a little background, a bit of background to, uh, to us. Uh, I'm Andrew and, and here with Sue. Um, we've been running together for well, about 12, 13 years. Somebody estimated recently we'd done about 85,000 kilometres together. This is um, side by side. Some 80 something marathons, lots of ultras and uh, our book, uh, our, uh, Year Before Last, is about it. our running and specifically uh, a tour we had of eight marathons in eight countries in eight weeks, which was a lot of fun. Um, so what we do nowadays is we spend our time helping people get started enjoying their running and we love working not just with runners, uh, with families, but also with race directors, people like Karen, to do what we can to promote and support them in uh, putting it together because it's not for the race directors and the wonderful volunteers, then people like us, the runners, we would not have any events to participate in. No, and what we're hoping to do is to help people basically enjoy their running, improve their running, learn from their running, and in fact apply the lessons from running to be successful in all aspects of their lives. And so in terms of how the webinar works, well, I'm kind of like the pilot and Sue is the tour guide with Karen as the host. So I think I can get this up front early. If if this is a great webinar and you enjoy it, then Sue and Karen have done a wonderful <laughs> job. If anything goes wrong and there's a problem, then blame me. You. That's what I'm... I'm who's the pilot? <laughs> yes. And so Andrew, on that who's note, the pilot? <laughs> we're going to... Um, to sort of move more to our to our host and our wonderful race director, Karen. It's fantastic to have you with us tonight. Thank you very much. For thank you very much for inviting. If you might start just 
by telling people how this all came about. Why well, uh, why are the women marathon? Why a woman marathon? Uh, well, we've not had a woman marathon in this part of the region, in Australia Asia, and in South Asia. So um, what better time to start a women's event? Um, seriously, it is actually to celebrate the 40th of 40th year of women being able to run marathons. Um, in, in the first six women who were allowed to run um, in Boston Marathon was, was a, a significant e event. And this year marks the 40th year in celebration of women being able to run a, a marathon officially. So um, the thought of Malaysian Women Marathon came about is apart from celebrating this 40th year is also to encourage women to run longer distances and feel the joy running rather than feel a hardship running because when women run together there is a, a sense of sisterhood sorority joy and you know they encourage peop each other to complete the distance so that's why it's a, it, you know it's, it's good to have a woman's run fantastic and of course you've been very generous by allowing uh, some of us men to run with our with our partners, well, with our lovely yes, women wives. never leave their husbands behind. <laughs> and um, it's it's great because as, as we sort of into the introduction there that um, Sue and I have been it's been a wonderful part of our marriage to be able to run together and do our training together and and just and, to share experience. Yes, exactly. Yeah, ex exactly. So with with our with our children, and so our, our daughter ran her first half marathon when she was twenty years with us, twenty years old with us. So it's it can be a real family event as well. That's as right. That's right. Push. That's right. So, so and and it's, got... it's great. As, sorry, I was just going to say it's great to have partner running as part of a Malaysian Women Marathon because we can see the registrations coming in that women. Um, are coming in running with their husbands and it's such a great atmosphere to have somebody pacing you for the distance and, and that's the essence of running, you, you, you enjoy running and you, especially when you enjoy running with the person you love. Now, just okay, just like you and Sue. <laughs> yeah, you've got uh, lots of wonderful sponsors and, and so we don't forget yeah. because they're really important to do it. We thought we might ask you to, before we get to talk about the course, just to um, tell uh, our, the viewers about and the, the entrance about some of the people who supported the race. That's right. Okay, Nestle comes in as the title sponsor. They have helped us um, in, a, in a way, supported the development of ladies and championing the rights for a, a sporting event, thanks to them. Um, we've got a tourism board of Malaysia, uh, Sing Sulango, sorry, um, and they are in here uh, to help build tourism package for uh, overseas runners coming in and we have a, a woman radio channel capital FM they are going to um, work out the a very special and unique venue setup uh, which uh, will be a, a good surprise for most of the runners here in Malaysia to come and see because um, we we want to make the place look a little bit uh, glamorous uh, in terms of presenting it an event for ladies. And of course the venue sponsor is ICT. It's um, uh, a, a tourist destination that uh, is new in Malaysia but is starting to pick up and be well known overseas. And we have Air Asia. Air Asia is sponsoring uh, our winners prizes. Uh, they're giving black vouchers. Uh, we've got SOX who is our web hosters. And we've got sponsors in kind like Banana Board who will be uh, distributing sunblocks to all the runners who feel the heat coming on on the later part of the morning. Uh, we've, of course, we've got Power Bar and New Balance coming in with apparels um, and celebrity fitness with um, um, membership drives that you know they have people coming in to support us for the run. Um, and that's about it. The Fantastic. Rest, so, hmm. just um, right, for those people just joining us. Um, this is Andrew and Sue here with Race Director Karen Lowe. We have um, the Facebook page for Malaysia Women Marathon is up and going. And of course, if you've got questions, if you'd like to post them there, we um, have all the microphones on to silence so we don't get background noise so that we can actually hear what Karen's saying. So for those who've just joined us, welcome. Um, fantastic coming along. We are recording this, so um, be able to catch up on the the bit that you've missed and um, it'll be also there for people who aren't able to join us tonight. So Karen, 
the thing that I think a lot of people want to hear about, and I know Sue and I certainly do, is where we're going to be running. And I know you're going to take us through the three uh, distances. And first of all, the marathon. Are you there, Karen? Can you hear us, Karen? Yes, okay. That's the mic. Has to... Are you hearing me? Yes, we got yes. you again. That's good. Okay. All right. Yes, so can you tell us a bit about the marathon course? Okay, we're going to start from ICT. Um, you can see the icon there, ICT. And we're just going to run up a long road further up. It's just a beautiful loop around the city. Um, what's going to happen is if you can see at kilometre 8, it's a big roundabout. Now, the beautiful thing about Shah Alam, it's an old queen city, but it's got, um, it's got a lot of roundabouts. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to let the runners go around the roundabouts and, and name all the roundabouts if they can spot the names of the roundabouts while they're running. Because Shah Alam loves roundabout and Shah Alam is the city um, that likes to retain their old culture. Now, after eight kilometer, you you lead up to the ninth kilometer, which is another big roundabout. What's going to happen is you're going to loop around two big stadiums. If you see the word section 13, um, those are the areas for two big stadiums that um, hosted the Commonwealth Games in 1998. You're going to loop around the stadium, and then you're going to come up at kilometer 14. You, it's the same roundabout that you will meet at nine kilometer. It's just going to go up a hill. Now the elevation will bring you up. Um, that will take you to another area where you will come back down. If you see the word 32, it's actually not 32. Because we're going to do a loop when we come back. It's a reverse loop of a 21 kilometer. So at that path, there's another roundabout. And we're going to go down the road if you see 16 kilometer. Okay, um, and that loops into the city now. We're going back into the city at 17 kilometer. And at 18, you will meet a beautiful structure building. It's a royal theater of Selangor. Uh, it's shaped like a clam, but it's a somewhat very shiny in, in its ex uh, exterior. It's got a lot of tiles that's uh, beautiful. Um, and that's you can see, and that section has two lakes, so you're going to run through three lakes altogether. That's in Shah Alam, and at that particular part where it's 19 kilometer, there will be a beautiful moss. It's 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 akin to the blue moss of Turkey, but what we've, we've named it here as the blue moss of Shah Alam as well. Um, then you're going to traverse down past the two lakes, past another lake, and at 21k, you're going to move up um, to its 22, which is a township of a university. So you can see the University Institute of Technology, and that's quite a big township of te um, university. You're going to move upwards to its 24 kilometer, and you're going to U turn there and come back down and do the reverse loop. And you're going to hit back to Sha uh, ICT via the reverse loops. And so, in terms of the, uh, the um, gradient, We've got that. Yes, we've got there the elevation. Yes, exactly. That. Is it hilly? It's hilly. It's got a lot of inclines. So, I mean, you're looking at um, moving to its eight kilometers and you're starting to build up a slopey incline to uh, 33 uh, meters in elevation. So, you're just going to maintain there and it's uphill a little bit again. And, it's, of course, when you have uphill, you have downhill. And there's another incline uh, that should be about four, 40 to 45 meters. 16.9 kilometer. So yes, looks, you're not going to have a. Looks quite yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, come so and if anyone's uh, come and meet the challenge, but but it's it's a lovely road <laughs> to run. Um, lots of shade, lots of trees, old trees that have grown into you know like a, a canopy over the road. So it's not all that bad. It's a beautiful sight to look at when you're running. It sounds and looks fantastic. And so if people do have questions, we're starting to get a couple coming through. If you'd like to paste them onto the Facebook page or send them through. So one of the questions was, um, you know, how, as a first time half marathoner, will I go about maintaining my stamina for the full event? So we're going to get on and talk about those sorts of things after we um, 
finish our sort of briefing on yeah, the race aspect. So, um, Karen, we've got uh, a couple that's of photos. That's the beauty. There you go. That's the beautiful blue moss. So we're just going to run past the beautiful moss, uh, uh, run uh, around. And, and if you see the front part, it's actually the roundabout. Here you go. There's another roundabout. It's a big roundabout that we've got to monitor um, the traffic. And, and, and as I said, it's a nice... Um, area for our runners to come because not a lot of people have come to run in Shah Alam. So we're going to be the first marathon in Shah Alam. Looks spectacular. Mm -hmm. and the, what's it's this one? one? Of the big, yeah. these, are, these are the two big stadiums that we're going to run. One huge big round around it. This picture must have been taken um, at an earlier time when they were hosting the Commonwealth Games in 1998. Right. Okay. So, so we've got the big stadiums. Ooh, that's oh, that's an interesting that's, structure. This, this is the Royal um, Theatre in Shah Alam, in the Sulang Royal Theatre. This was what I was trying to explain. Um, beautiful tiles uh, patterns. This, this, the roof is made up of tiles and, and mosaics. So you get aesthetically beautiful structures in Shah Alam. And, and if you run by, you know, you can see a lot of greeneries if, if, if you've seen trees around. So that's what you're going to get in Shah Alam, a lot of trees. A lot of greeneries. Very attractive. Beautiful. And um, mm. the half marathon. The half the marathon is a, it, it's a very nice loop, actually. It's just almost the same as the 42, save for the fact that at 9 kilometer you don't go loop around the big stadiums, but you will still get to see the stadium uh, within your wheel. You, all you have to do is just you're, you're going to U-turn at the roundabout at 9 kilometer. And you're going to hit back into town, into the into the area where you see the moss, the two lakes, and you're going to get back into uh, the university centre on 18 kilometer, and you hit home stretch after you turn at 19 and 20 kilometers and 21, and you're heading back into ICT. And there you have the half marathon. And gradient. Yes. Actually, it well, just well, just looks. It just looks a little bit uh, spread out, but in terms of elevation, it's the, it's the same as what you would get for 42. Just, just with half the pain. Yes. <laughs> half the <Yeah>. hills. <laughs> we've, we've, um, a, a gel cycle, and people come and they position themselves for, for anyone's the energetic spray from okay so we just have, have you lost me again the last one here you lost the, me again i got you back now we, yeah. we did lose okay. it for a moment we no the, 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 we were saying i was just saying about cream sprays from pers hello Ooh. yes yes yep uh, oh, um, so we've got energetic, energetic sprays for anybody feeling the cramps coming so there are four stops you can just get them to help you with a spray Fantastic. So the 8K course, uh, the fun run, can you tell us a little about this one? Um, seriously, it might not be 8K because looking at it, it's perhaps 9, but we wanted to um, make the run more fun, so we extended it slightly shorter for ladies to run. Um, originally, it was intended to have been 10K, but um, here's Here's the secret. The secret is out. We wanted to put the ladies um, who have been running 10K regularly, and we want to push them to run 21 kilometers. So by putting 8 kilometers, they're wondering, hey, I've done the 10K. Why do I want to go back to the 8K? So here's the catch. They've gone on to register for 21 kilometers. <laughs> so, Sneaky register. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so Sneaky. sorry, girls, but you know, you what they did it so well. They've gone to register 21 kilometers, and I'm so proud of them. Seriously, <laughs> so it was quite difficult for me to chart the 8k. <laughs> I ran it, and I found it difficult to, to to bring it down to seriously on the dot 8k. <laughs> well, it's uh, it's going to be a lovely run, and a little bit of a uh, little bit of up and down, mm -hmm. just enough to it keep interested. That. There will always be up and down in Shalom, but that's what we women should, you know, get ourselves a, a little bit more excited in, rather than having a flat road. When you climb up the hill, you feel your energy surge, and when you're coming down the hill, you feel livelier again. And that's the fun of running, finding different um, terrains to run, different elevations to run. 
Okay, so that's the, the courses. Now, the start time is something which you know, every runner needs to be very careful about um, yes. because there's nothing worse than missing the start. Not that I've done it and I don't want to start now. No. So our start times. Um, we're going to start early for the marathon. It's 4.30 a.m. in the morning. Um, we thought we would like the runners to feel more comfortable because in, in, in the morning um, at Malaysia, it actually is quite cooling to run. But the sun comes up quite brightly um, at by 8. So if you are looking at slower runners who might be coming back about 9 p.m., so they, they're going to face um, bright sun like about an hour and an hour and a half. So if you start at 4.30, we might get people finishing at 8 o'clock and 8.30. So that's a good time for them to finish the run. Um, half marathon, regular time for women to finish here, two hours, two and a half. So 5.30 is a really good time for uh, half marathon runs to start here in, in KL, in Malaysia. So the 8K fun run, it's a fun run. We'll start 7 a.m. Um, we're looking at 8 a.m. for runners to come back to the finish line. And that, that will be a good time to enjoy a, a, a good morning um, activity. And we will be presenting some fruit, fruit salad for at the end of the run. And they'll be there to cheer on the other runners as they come in. Well, we, we've got a, a sort of a cheering section for them so they can see the, the longer distance runner coming back. So they, they are, um, there will be flow charts and directions telling them where to wait um, for runners coming back from the marathon and the half marathon. And of course, uh, it, it's all uh, at ICD. Yes, exactly. It's, everything and happens the, at ICD. The, this map is on the Facebook page. Uh, so if people are looking for the information, it's probably on the website as well, but you can find out how to get to I city. So we're going to keep moving along now. Karen, you have a very special guest and you might want to tell people all about your special uh, yes, guest. Yes, I do. wonderful woman you've, you've uh, been able to entice to come we've, and support you. It's fantastic. And we've, we've made acquaintance and uh, we've become friends actually. It's um, Catherine Switzer. Um, she's known as the first woman who officially ran the Boston Marathon. 1967. Um, no woman could officially run a marathon. Um, just lost you again, Karen. Again? Did you hear me? Hello? You're back. You're back. Okay, I'm back. Yeah, oh, this... Hello? Yes, we You're got back? you. Yep. Did you that? hear me? Yes, we can hear now. Oh, right, dropped off again. So what, right, when Karen... We've got you again now. No. So I'll just, just keep moving. We've got... Um, you're in, Yep, the marathon woman, Catherine oh, Schwarzer. So uh, uh, at, at that time in 1967... Yeah, we've dropped, dropped you off, Karen, there. So, so Yeah, look, basically um, no women were allowed to run in the Boston Marathon and Catherine Schwitzer took it upon herself to enter the Boston Marathon under Kay Switzer and... Uh, found herself on the course running with or surrounded by many other men and basically it was one of those little twists of fate that when they saw her on the course they realized that she was actually a female running and that was something that had not been accepted and was not accepted at that time and whilst she was almost manhandled off the course but actually completed the event in 1967 crossed the line with her fellow runners that she was running with a group across the line and subsequently went on to run many Boston marathons after that, including 
becoming a place within that event as well. Um, and it's become a bit of a legend in terms of encouraging women to run and to try running the longer distances because it was always something that she was passionate about, encouraging women to get out of their comfort zone and to try running rather than just 800 metre distances to actually think about going into marathon running um, and even longer distances than that, um, one of those stages in history that physically women were not encouraged to run beyond certain distances. So we have um, a number of pre-race events on the Friday and Saturday of which uh, Catherine Fitzgerald will be a big part of giving a speech and doing a number of participation there. Here's the, the venue. So Friday from 3pm to 9.30. Uh, again, booths, sponsors, and then the events on Friday is the official opening ceremony from 3.30 to 5.30. 5.30 is the happy hour. 6 o'clock is a uh, meet the fan. Transition with, yes, Catherine Switzer will be there. 7 o'clock is the food de uh, demo. Uh, 8 o'clock, uh, Sue and I were doing our, our workshop. And 9.15, we've got some injury avoidance. Uh, so that'll be a particularly interesting thing. Then on Saturday, you, again... You hear me? Yes, oh, I'm back. back. Back from noon till 6.30 on Saturday. Oh, and awesome. then we've got the raw, raw vegan food. celebrity raw chef. Raw vegan celebrity yeah. chef. Yeah. She's the celebrity uh, chef. Am, 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 I back on, on, am I back online? Yes, keep going, Karen. Okay. Well, I was just going to say something about um, the 5th of April, starting at 3 p.m. It's, it's and, and finishing at 9.30. It's because we wanted... Um, we wanted the runners who are coming to collect the race kit to see the lights, to see the lights in ICT. So there are a lot of lights, uh, digital lights, display in the ICT itself. Fantastic. So we've got the fashion show on Saturday afternoon, and then the um, the big speech and dialogue session. You want to tell us a little bit about those, please, Karen? Am I here again? Oh, I'm, I'm lost. Yes. Hello. Yes, okay. we got you. So. So we, we wanted to have a dialogue session and we've got five panelists uh, consisting of uh, two professors and then we've got a Thai lady who's a, a Muslim lady um, coming here to inspire a, a very conservative uh, community in Malaysia, in Shah Alam, uh, especially for encouraging Muslim ladies to start running more because this lady is uh, amazing. She has done long runs wearing a hijab, uh, you know, uh, the Muslim lady wearing the hijab. And we've got Catherine Switzer herself and um, we've got Sue who's also part of the panelists. Now we're going to talk a little bit about the history of women in running. Um, it, it's, it's never been easy for women to come into running having Catherine Switzer champion our rights to start running and it wasn't actually until 1972 where we really officially allowed to run. Um, and six ladies ran that that um, year in 1972 in, in Boston Marathon. And what's going to happen is we will talk about um, uh, how running has brought about uh, in, uh, brought how how running has affected our life and what good things running has uh, made our life, uh, what life changing experiences we have uh, had, you know, whilst running, um, and we will end up. With and sort of a, an objective to see what we will bring forward to next year. It is their mission that the ladies would like to see accomplished for the next year's um, uh, Malaysian Women Marathon? After that, then, yep, yeah. sorry, go ahead, Karen. No, it's all right. Sorry. No, we we're just going to say that after that intense and a little bit more serious session, we're going to have some light cover loading session. Oh, we've got a, a, a really, really uh, fun person, Joanne Kam. She's a very well-known stand-up comic here in Malaysia, so she's going to come in and uh, um, lighten up the atmosphere before we close the session about 6.30 a.m., where everybody should go back and take a good rest before waking very early in the morning and coming up uh, to ICT to re for your reporting time and starting to run at 4.30. Fantastic. So a couple of shots here of the, um, of the venue, the venue. Some, some, that's right. some different angles. Looks fantastic. That's the speech. 
Well, we've not decked up the place yet, so okay. basically it's yeah. nice. And it's where we, we're going to do something different because we're going to have merchandise for sale. This is this is a hoodie. Uh, we didn't leave the men behind, so we decided to do something blue so that the men would also come in and tell us, run, sisters, run. <laughs> nice. I really wanted a pink one. What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay, we'll get you a purple one then. <laughs> just, 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 just no, blue is your color. So that's fantastic. The venue looks looks sensational, and the merchandise. Yes, it is. Yes, it's yes, it's, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, Karen, for people who haven't entered or have got friends who uh, might want to enter, family, friends, whatever it might be, uh, it's still not too late, is it? And they go to the website. No, yes, you just get to the website. Um, it's actually a redirection because this is our web hoster. So it, to make it easier, you just go into uh, mwm dot my. And it just okay. and it gets into this URL because this is our web host, this URL, and you will see a, an icon that says register here, and you click on it and you get registered. Registration's not going to close till 25th of March, so come and join us, and we'll have some exciting events going on. And, and as hopefully, we always say, we'll... um, if if uh, people don't remember that, just just Google. Malaysia Women Marathon. Malaysia Women it'll, Marathon, that's it'll right. Take you to take the right spot. To there. That's yeah. the easy remember. That's right. So, okay, Karen, I mean, you've been out doing a wonderful job promoting the event and uh, organising and de dealing with all of the, the difficulties of, of, a, of a race director. Um, we're going to go on now and get Sue to talk about some tips for runners, and then we're going to. Really? Um, uh, oh, we're going to certainly open it up and capture any questions that people have, and so we're going to ask you then to answer any questions that people might have. So thank you yes. very much. You're welcome. And we'll also, we'll also ask you to uh, have some closing words. So we'll give you a little while to just think about what you might like to, to say, anything that we should have covered that we haven't so far. Okay, thanks. So the, the critical point here is with three weeks, less than three weeks to go, one of the fundamentals which we've uh, learned from many of the great coaches, but specifically from Jeff Galloway, who uh, has sort of been one of our mentors, is that in the two weeks before a marathon, more training isn't, isn't going to translate isn't the results. Exactly. So your, your training has got to be done with three three weeks, certainly by two weeks out. So no point trying to log more long runs in the last two weeks. But what you can do in those last two weeks is um, improve your chances or mess them up. Indeed, by perhaps trying to put in too many miles in that last two weeks or training too hard, you actually run the risk of performing badly on a day, maybe due to muscle fatigue, due to injury or potential injury. Mm -hmm. So really, um, the final preparation in those two weeks is vital for your performance, yep. but not in the way you might think it might be. So not no more overtraining, um, starting to rest, and of course the, the way you do your final preparation with your food uh, and all that is all going to set you up to to be successful. So that's really what we're going to just focus on now with a few tips across a couple of key topics. So the last weeks of training, Sue, first of all, tip number one. Tip number one is to plan your taper. Um, that means gradually decreasing the amount of running that you're doing and maybe even the frequency of running if you're you know, running more than four times a week that you might actually cut down the number of times and what this does it gives your body a chance to recover if there are any little niggles or little injuries it gives your muscles a chance to build restore themselves to put in a wonderful performance on the day so really plan your taper or your easing off or backing off of training. It's not just stopping suddenly, it's decreasing gradually as you get closer to your race day. And this is something that's particularly difficult for new uh, runners in as they're stepping up in distance, whether it's to 8k to the half or to the marathon, because as you taper and you recover from your fatigue, you get stronger, you actually have the energy comes back and it's hard not to get out there and, and use it but you really got to save it up now for race day and so it's it feels a bit uncomfortable a bit unnatural but the most important thing you can do is really work that taper so the second uh, aspect of that then is in terms of you've still got a little bit of time with your your last few runs to practice what you're going to eat before you go out to run to practice what you're going to eat on the run how you're going to what liquid you're going to take, what drinks you're going to take, and to practice in the clothes that you're going to run in. 
So you don't want to start your race day in new with a new routine. You don't want to wear new clothes first time. You don't want to try different food. So you want to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't on your last couple of runs now in the lead up, it's a good time to do that. Well, and Andrew, can I say? Andrew, can I say something about new clothing here? It's actually very essential not to wear something new. Um, you, you could go out there and run and get lots of chafing, if, especially when you wear something new. Um, and when you feel uncomfortable during a run, it's just not going to help you uh, in terms of your mental uh, ability to, to push yourself forward. You know, uh, Part of the battle is because you're, you're uneasy about your, your apparel as well. So yeah, don't wear anything new if you want to go and run a long distance. Yep, so we've got now time in the next uh, two and a bit weeks to try anything that you haven't already tried and get it get it there, similarly with your food. Yep, and I think one other thing just with that practice thing also is to practice at the time of day that you would be running. Great, great tip there. Mm. Good, good to have a run at the time you're doing. Uh, and if you are well. looking to change shoes, again, you don't want to do that in the last uh, few days, so it's still time now this week uh, to maybe try a new pair of shoes if you do need to, but again, don't leave that till the last minute. Uh, and of course, checking all the details. Yep, make sure that you know what time your race is starting, where you've got to be, at what time, how you're going to get to the race start, how you're going to get back from the race. And again, just double checking, rechecking that you have understood everything and all the details. And the last one here on these tips is as you start to um, reduce your run training, it's easy to keep eating the same food that you have when you've been at full training. And uh, I'm someone who's very good at this. I can put on a couple of kilos in the last two or three weeks if I'm not careful. So um, you just need to be a bit mindful that as you reduce your training, just to cut back a little bit on the food so you're not um, getting out of balance. So food and hydration is another critical one, Sue. So what, what's the, a couple of things again people can do here? Well, particularly if you've got the marathon, is to really focus on your hydration and your carbohydrate intake in the three days leading up to your race if you're running the marathon. It doesn't mean necessarily eating more food, but it just means increasing the quantity of carbohydrate and starting to just work gradually on your hydration, not saving it for the day before, but over a few days, making sure that you're well hydrated. Okay. Uh, again, new new food. So you should have been training, or you've still got a you know a, a two weekends left to to trial anything that you you still might not be sure of. But you don't want to be trying new food on the day or two or three before your race. And uh, we're talking no about spicy earlier. food. In terms of <laughs> spicy foods or things which you're not used to eating that might hang around for a bit. Um, and of course, for a lot of a lot of our friends from KL. They've got a different definition of spicy to what I might have, but whatever it is, a it's, different grid or spice. It's, yes, it's it's being careful there because it's, having done it, there's nothing worse than going out and going for a long run when you've got last night's dinner hanging around and getting in the way. And an upset mm. tummy, and an upset tummy. That's worse. The um, we get, we're going to talk next week in the next webinar in the series a bit more about the last couple of days of eating. But the two we, we found over over time, the two critical meals are the night before the night before to really uh, have a nice uh, good meal there and to be planning that whatever it is you might have two or three hours before you race so you've got a bit of fuel in the tank so they're the ones not to skip uh, not that you should skip any of your meals but particularly make sure you get those ones right can I say um, one more thing here Andrew please you do. know when we're talking about um, the night the two nights before the, the, the run. Um, this is what I normally do because the night before the run I don't seem to sleep well. So what I do is I sleep much better the night earlier so that it you know it doesn't really affect uh, the system of me trying to get myself to sleep and have a really good rest the night before the run. So I'm not so anxious after that. That's, that's great advice. Okay, absolutely spot on. So get that meal, get that good night's rest the night before the night before so that you're all set for it. That's now, right. when we're out there on race day. Yeah, when we're in the middle of our race, one thing we need to be focused on is to take on drinks and to have goos or energy food before we need to. Now, what that means is before you hit a flat spot or you drop in energy or you feel the point that you've just run out of fuel in the tank and you are going slower and losing energy. So take on those energy gels and have the drinks at the drink stops before 
you actually need to before you're thirsty or before you run out of energy. Okay, just uh, moving to the other side there. And our next one is to plan to, to take in your food frequently. So about every 45 minutes for some sort of food or energy and to be taking your um, drinks at, if not all the drink stations, certainly at most of the drink stations. Again, following on from what Sue was just saying there about uh, don't wait till it's too late. Do it for Was that a bottle of hook you were holding? From the beginning. It's, uh, that's during an ultra <laughs> marathon. Like a... Yes, it's, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's a Powerade and a, and a yep. Coca Cola. <laughs> When it's justified, if you run an ultra ultra distance, you, you get to drink whatever you want, and Coke is probably one of the good ones to take, actually. <laughs> so I had uh, a couple of questions there about when to refuel, and so I think that, that point is about every 45 minutes during the event, and uh, you know, 20 minutes to, to 40 minutes for your, your drinks, but certainly you want to have a look at where the drink stations are and be thinking about taking mm. that on. And it doesn't hurt to have a sip or two at each of the drink stations if they That's are more right. frequent than that. Okay, so race strategy. Again, we're going to talk a bit more about this next week, but for today, first thing is you can't expect to go out on race day and run faster than what you've trained for. So the um, critical thing here is to have a look at what training you've done. Have you, have you done all the work? Have you missed some where it is? And then set a pace that matches up with that. Can I say something here, Andrew? Please do. You know, uh, at, at the beginning of the run, um, a lot of runners, new runners especially, they don't realize when the guns go, they get excited and they start running at a faster pace than what they've trained for. So the, the starting of the run is actually quite crucial for them to pick up, uh, to warm up and, and to go into the pattern of the pace that they have designed to run consistently throughout the 42 kilometers. Don't get too excited at the beginning and start running way too fast. And then you'll, you'll, you'll find when you get to five kilometers, you, you start to tire out a little bit more. Yeah, and I think that, that leads into probably our second tip, which is to stick, oh, to, stick your to your pace. pace. Yes, yeah, no, stick to your pace, right yeah. Rather than get, as you say, sucked into what the, the speed that others and around then, you were going or feeling that, oh, I'm going to go faster in the second half, just work out your pace and no matter what's going on around you with other people, stick to your, to your pace. Planned. That's right. Yep, and so you, you would, uh, I think for most people, it's one, two and three kilometres are the points to check and uh, you really don't want to be going too fast ahead of your time once you get past that mm -hmm. three kilometre stage. So sticking to your pace and of course uh, an even pace will enable you to run you know, throughout and run a strong second half and, and often the, the best races are those where we actually exactly. uh, have a bit of I've, energy I've, second half. I've always taught stronger. Exactly. I've, I've always taught that the, the run for a marathon starts at 21 kilometer. That's what's crucial. About, and and it, that makes a lot of change because at 21, if you have, um, you can do a, a negative speed and you can do faster time, then you are actually a true marathon runner because you've known how to pace yourself. So next, uh, next tip here is, is the reverse of, of that. And so sometimes uh, in our races, we get off to a slower start. We might uh, have mistimed our need for, a, uh, say, a toilet break, might have had a shoelace, might have been caught up in a crowd. And so if you do get behind the pace that you're hoping to run, uh, the mistake that often people make is to try to catch it all up, you know, in the next 500 metres or the next kilometre. So rather than doing a, a super fast burst and getting caught, uh, allow yourself to say, well, okay, I've, I've a minute behind where I needed to be. I'm going to catch up 15 seconds per kilometre for the next four kilometres rather than trying to do it all at once. So uh, catch up slowly if you if you do fall behind. And so, and the other one is to plan for possible scenarios. Like what happens if it is a, a wet day, for instance? Is that how that how is that going to affect what you're going to wear? How is it going to affect where you're planning to stand at the start? Um, if you do get blisters, are you going to have a contingency plan? You can carry band aids, or is there something that you need to prepare? Think about things that might go wrong or that you might need to take into consideration. And that could include, um, I think, our next topic well, about... It also picks up, you know, the running with hills, hills and those, those sorts of things. Whether you need to take some walk breaks. And of course, to think up front, are you going to run alone? Are you going to run with a partner? Are you going to run with a group? If you are running with a pace group, what happens if the pace group goes too quick for you and the next thing you're 
you're left alone or you can't keep up. So you need to think through uh, those sorts of what if you think about all the things that can go wrong, then the irony is that you're well equipped one to deal with them if they happen, but two, you find yourself more often than not avoiding them. So think those things through. And if you do have questions on these areas, again, either tonight or in the next few weeks, put them onto the Facebook page and between Karen, Sue and I, we'll certainly do our best to, to answer those. And of course, we are doing the clinics at the uh, mm. at iCity on the Friday and Saturday exactly. before, so yeah. come along and have a chat. And join us, that's right. Race day challenge. We're almost at the end, folks, and a couple more questions to deal with. But so on the race day challenge. So you really want to map out how you're going to get there, what time starts, where you're going to leave your your car if you've got a car, where you're going to park your bags. There's nothing worse than racing um, and worrying about missing the start. So it really sets up you for for a great day if you plan that out well beforehand. And then to follow your plan, if you've got a race plan worked out of how you're going to tackle the event, then stick to your plan, follow your plan um, as best you can. Don't go off on somebody else's plan or race strategy. Stay with your own plan. Maintain your energy. So we sort of made the, the comments earlier about the energy every 40 to 45 minutes, keeping your um, liquids up. Once again, you want to do this before you get into strife, not after. We can't re-emphasize that enough. And sometimes you're running along feeling really good. You might you know, be enjoying the scenery. You might be following somebody or talking to somebody. And you kind of it's easy to say, oh, I'll skip that drink stop or I'll skip that goo. Um, if you do that, the next thing you know, you can be in struggle. So maintaining your energy and, uh, of course, being prepared for what you might do if you get a, a cramp, uh, those sorts of injuries, or if you're not feeling too well. Yes, if you do come down with an illness, what you're going to do about managing that. Does it mean slowing your pace but you can still run? Is it the type of injury that you could actually run through but might have to take more walk breaks or drop down in distance? Just what are the type of things that might affect your day and be aware of them. Yeah, the last one here in pre preparing your race day strategy is what we call managing the mind. So uh, one of the things I love to do is I always imagine Sue running across the finish line and then I see myself next to her. So when I feel like giving up, I think about how I need to be there to support Sue crossing the finish line. And so that kind of drags me along. Um, another thing that I often do is I, I take my big rubber band out with me. Uh, it's an imaginary rubber band. And when I'm struggling to run, I throw my rubber band around somebody who's about 50 meters in front of me and then I use my rubber band to slowly but surely imagine myself catching up to them and that keeps me going. So thinking about some of those little uh, managing tips for the mind is a great way to keep going when sometimes the legs want to mm. have a rest and, but it's not quite time. And it might just be breaking down the distance into small little manageable That's chunks right. that right. you can tick the box as you get to each of those kilometers um, and it's amazing what the mind can do when yeah, that, the body exactly. starts to ache. I, I was going to just say a tip. It's going to give a tip that this is what I do when I run and when I'm feeling tired and like especially at um, 25 kilometers where my energy is normally very low. I start counting by the distance and I, I tell myself, well, it's another 5k to 30k. And when you get to 30k, you say, there's another 5k to get to 35. When you get to 35, you're another 5k to 40. And that, you're almost done. You, you've got two more kilometres to go. And that's a little trick of and the that, mind. Exactly. One of, one, of the, one of the other tricks. And you actually, the last, the last two kilometres is a, a joy to run because you know you're finishing. And that, that, that finishing arch is just going to greet you and your, your self-accomplishment is just going to come and say, well, I've just done another marathon. And that's just a great feeling when you cross the line. So one of the... Uh, one of the... Uh, other things which we can do with managing the mind and also managing the legs is the use of walk breaks. And and one of the questions we've just got from somebody who's on the on the webinar tonight is is saying a seasoned runner gave me the advice to walk during the uphill, and um and then I can run and down the the rest of the way, um and that helps me get there. Is that good advice? Well, we would say that uh, that is particularly good advice, and you'll see a lot of the great uh, long distance ultra runners will certainly be doing their little walk breaks on the hills. Another time we will use little walk breaks is through the drink stations to make sure that we don't spill our, spill our drinks. 
And um, again, Jeff Galloway has proven with research with hundreds of thousands of runners now that those little walk breaks used early through drink stations and on key points will actually mean you'll run a faster marathon, unless you're hoping to go under three hours, you'll run a faster marathon than if you just try to run non-stop the whole way. So um, the, the point of the exercise is, many ways, is to get there as quick as you can in the best condition you can. Uh, and sometimes those little walks can certainly help. So we'll be out there doing our little walk breaks through our drink stops. And if those hills are it mean, we'll put one we in there We might be too. putting one in there too. Okay, so we're up to our last little uh, session and we've got uh, just on 10 minutes to go. So I think we're going to just about make it. And this is for those people that are, might be running with a partner. Mm. Five quick tips on uh, your partner running aspects. So first of all, Sue? Is to work out what is your shared goal, and then work out a strategy to to make that to make that work. Now, is your your goal to finish? Are you trying to go fast? Is there a time goal that you both share? And it isn't it does need to be a shared goal too. I'll just stress as well, and then to work out the strategy that goes along with that. Um, you only going to go as fast as one person is prepared to go. Uh, you're going to change that. Are you going to try and stick with it? And just make sure that you're both in agreement with some of those decisions. So again, we'll be uh, at the workshop. There, we'll be giving some tips and some work sh worksheets and details on how to do that. If people have got questions, so you can come and have a chat with us uh, about uh, some more on that because this really sets you up for success. Um, are you going to run the whole way together? Or are you going to split up? This works much better when it's predetermined. So, yep, look, we think we'll do the first 10K together and then we'll see how we're feeling or whatever. It becomes as an incredible shock if one thinks you're going to run the whole way together and the other doesn't. And then it's really tough for the person who might be left if the other one runs off. So, there is no right or wrong here other than deciding before you start the event how you're going to handle this notion of either staying together or splitting up. Because if you've agreed up front, then it's kind of easy. There's no big deal. You can prepare for it. Yeah, but Andrew, not here in Malaysia Women Marathon, because the man has to finish with the woman, because that's the condition. The, that's, the husband okay, and the and wife has to cross the finish line together. And that, that works fine for the uh, for when we do have the men and the women running together. But I'm sure exactly. we're going to have I'm sure we're going to have some some, running some running ladies running together who running on might, home and exactly might be yeah. able to yeah. Yeah. Up, so. yeah, or some groups. Good reminder well. from Karen there about the men. Mm, men yes, men. To... But what's yeah. men's entry? Yeah, men's entry is on his pacing the the woman to the finish line. Or in my case, Sue will be pacing me. Sue will be pacing you to the finish line. That's right. And so again, there is the logistics when it comes to running with somebody else. So how are you going to handle drink stops? Um, what if somebody has to stop and do their shoelace, or they've got a blister, they want to readjust their sock, or they have to go to a toilet break? Um, where are you going to meet at the start? What would you do if you got split up? If one things? just wants to go slower at, for a time that they're struggling, um, how are you going to deal with that? What happens if you have decided to run together but you do get separated in the crowd? Uh, the little tip or tr a trick that we use is we we run on to the next drink station and we meet, at, meet up at the drink station. Um, and remembering that if you're standing there for 10 seconds waiting for somebody to catch up at a drink station, it will seem like about two hours, um, even though it's only 10 seconds. So time standing still, um, you just need to be mindful of that because it can, you just need to wait a little bit longer than you think you otherwise might do. And and the, the other tip is to just work out whether you are going to hold a conversation and chat the whole way and that you're both happy with that or whether you're happy to run in silence and it's going to be annoying to you if you've got constant chatter going on beside you as you're running. So just a, another tip to sort of work out with your partnership how you're going to manage that for a happy finish and happy running. Now we're going to uh, in a moment just pause for some questions. I think we've picked up a few along the way but we're going to, we'll come back to there. Uh, a, a last sort of comment from us is that no matter how slowly just keep moving towards the target. You know, one step after the other and the next thing you know you will get there. It can be tough going sometimes but one step over the other, keep keep yourself moving and you'll get there. And in terms of the next couple of uh, webinars, next Tuesday, and the link will be out tomorrow, uh, next Tuesday we're doing a countdown for the last 10 days. So in this one we actually work through 
day 10 what to do, day 9, day 8, day 7. And so it's the little things like uh, uh, what to do, when you do it, when to fix your toenails, when to get, as Karen gave us that great tip, get the good night's sleep two nights before. Uh, it's a, basically a day-by-day -day play through the last 10 days. Then the week after, on the Monday uh, about this time, we'll be opening up just for, again, some more of those tips around training the mind, what to do on the race day the, when in the tough times, and, and predominantly for, for questions. You know, six days out, any questions mm. that people have. Then we're going to give you a week's celebration after the event, but then the Tuesday after that, we'll be back for um, like a, a review. So if you've got questions, how did you go? What, uh, what worked? What didn't work? How can you learn from the experience and set yourself up for your future mm, running? Exactly. And we'll combine with that with a bit of uh, a bit of goal setting as well as some learning aspects. So, three more opportunities after tonight to prepare, learn, and become better runners into the future. So, Karen, we're going to uh, give you a moment for any any comments you'd like to make. Uh, we're going to check the the question board to see if there's any others that which we haven't got. We've tried to field them either directly or in our comments as we go. But we might just give you a few moments while we scan the Facebook and scan the chat lot box and those sorts of things. Yeah. Actually nothing much to say that I like except I, I really am impressed with the number of ladies who have registered for the longer runs. Um, so in so far our registration has recorded 75 percent of women running um, the longer distance like 21 and 42 kilometers um, which means more ladies are running longer distance now. Um, it's amazing to see um, that they've put in the effort um, and we've seen new runners coming in, the, the ladies, the group of ladies running uh, this time around uh, and especially last year the percentage of them running have, has increased and we are going to go ahead with Malaysian Women Marathon year by year. Uh, I hope to get this an annual event and we hope to encourage more women to run um, and perhaps from 42 they might find it comfortable to go into ultra marathon running like I have done um, and, and when you have run you will see the changes in your lifestyle too you will lead a happier lifestyle and, and healthier the food that you take your diet changes and you'll be actually a little bit more happy of how you've become just from running. So I'm encouraging more women to join us in the Malaysian Women Marathon. And thank you very much, Andrew and Sue, for hosting this, this wonderful web, webinars. Um, first of a kind to happen in Malaysia and for Malaysia's uh, uh, marathon run as well. Thank you very much for uh, getting us on board. Well, it's been our pleasure. And, and um, just picking up on a few of the comments in the chat box and from, from people, um, thank you for those that have made such lovely comments and it's been our pleasure to have been here and we're mm. glad that you have found it informative. Um, for, for those people, absolutely no, no, no need to apologise for checking in late. The idea with these webinars is that we record them and we know that everybody has busy, busy schedules with work, with families, with all sorts of things happening and so the recording will be available for you to go back and, and uh, watch bits that you might have missed or you might might want to not quite understood you want to listen to it again and similarly with next week or the week after if you can't come along at the live um, webinar then it will be available for the recording afterwards so we don't expect everyone to sit glued to 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 us for the for the whole hour it's great if you do and you're most welcome but you can sort of chip in and out as you go I know we've got a number of people that are doing their first uh, half marathons and their first marathons, and we and we, um, we just we just congratulate you mm. on, on doing the training. It, it can be hard, but it's a, it's an incredible thing that you've done to have got this far. As we we want to reemphasise the point from earlier, in the last two weeks, doing more mileage and extra distance and trying to up your training, isn't going to do anything to help your performance. In fact, it's going to work against you. So you do still need to do some runs. You need to reduce your, your distance. You need to uh, do it a bit easier. Maybe cut out the speed works, particularly in the last uh, week, as well as reducing your distance, because it's all about recovery. It's all about letting your body regenerate. You've, in essence, put the, the money in the bank, put the training in the bank, 
and in the, the last two weeks the thing that you can do the most importantly is get some extra rest, let your body recover and all the hard work will come, come good so that you'll have this big burst of energy on race day. And often that uh, people find is that because they've tapered and they've rested, the first little bit of the race they might actually feel a bit Oh, I'm not sure if I've done the right thing here. You're heavy and sluggish to get started. But it kicks mm. in and as you get through the second half of your event, whether you're doing the eight, the half or the marathon, that rest will will um, come home to reward you as, as you celebrate an inglorious finishing and crossing a, a, a line. So we're back Can I say something here as well? Please, uh, please. Sometimes when, when the person rests before they run, um, they, they feel... It's like a re-energized feeling when they start running in, in the race. So it's a happy feeling because they've not run for three days or two days, maybe if they've just rested. So when they start running again, they because generally they like to run, like me, if I stop running for two days and I go out there and run again, I feel happy. And when you feel happy running, you'll somehow do better. So worry less and feel happy running. That's my well, advice. I think other uh, factor also is that with the type of hydration and the food exactly, as we start yeah. to get closer, it's it's natural that the body does actually retain fluid or you do feel a little bit heavy. heavy. So it's, mm. it's, it is something that is a physical thing that's going to help you during your race, but it might feel a little bit bleh for the, for the um, 48 hours before, but it's going to all come good on the day. Okay, folks, so we better we better wrap it up. Uh, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. All the best for your training for the next couple of weeks. Please come and say hello at the uh, uh, on the Friday. The event programs, yes, at, that's at right. The, the programs, and uh, we hope you could join us again next, next Tuesday mm. when we uh, do our countdown and we take you through day by day for the last ten days. Those little bits and pieces factors. based around the mistakes that people like us and Karen have made over the years. Uh, we're going to pass on the errors of our ways so that uh, those of you particularly doing your first events or upping your distance don't make some of the same mistakes that we've made over time. So thanks a lot, Karen. Um, You're welcome. Best of luck for uh, the you. next couple of weeks. Keep up the great work and we look forward to seeing everyone uh, hopefully next, next week, week but certainly in Malaysia in three weeks' time. Yes. Good night, folks. Waiting to see Bye. you guys. Good night.